Hello and welcome to a new video about Internet of Things. This time we want to use again our Arduino to support or to put live data into our thing. Yeah. This we want to do. Yeah. And again we're going to use our little ESP device. Yeah. The only thing which is really different from our approach to the MQTT server is that there is another program running. So we need to download again a program to our ESP server, uh, server, our ESP device, yeah, our ESP controller. So like I said, 3.3 volt and ground need to go to 3.3 volt and ground of course. Yeah. Ground 3.3 and RX and TX are also to be TX, TX. This is how it should look like. Yeah. And to reach, to directly reach this device, yeah, I need to short circuit or connect ground with reset. Then basically our Arduino is working as a bridge, yeah. as a gateway. This is would be the correct word in gateway because it's translating from USB ping, tin -tin, to to here. Mm -hmm. This is the wrong. Okay, now it seems to work. So again I have to press reset and program, release reset, then release program. Now this should be in programming mode. Okay. And now we should be able to program this. So on the computer side there is also a program called I've called it Thing Worker, I know. This is basically the same like we used before, this ESP gateway, however it is now issuing the correct HTTP requests to our ThingWork server. Okay? This is the big difference. However, since we have to use an HTTPS connection, we need to give a fingerprint of the server. If you don't know how to reach the fingerprint, here this is for instance the Google website. Press here with the right mouse button on this little lock symbol. Yeah? and look at the certificate yeah. and here under details you can find the fingerprint of this server yeah. this is the fingerprint of this server and this fingerprint from your thingworks instance and yeah, not from google from your thingworks instance this needs to go here yeah. so this is the fingerprint then it should work okay then it should work so, actually this is all we have to do, adapt here a little bit, and now we are switching again to generic, yeah. the correct board, ESP8266, yes, generic. And we'll try to upload this. Let's see if this is really working. Yeah. Takes a little while to compile. Connecting. Uh huh. You see, if something like this is happening, it's just it's not connecting. Then you should try to press program, reset, release, reset, release program once again. Yeah. Then probably it was not correctly switched into programming mode. But still not. Yeah. Failed to connect to ESP. Well, let's try it once again. Reset, program. Release, reset, release programming mode. Upload. 
Or maybe, you know, maybe I've turned, I've connected it the wrong, in the wrong order. Connecting. Okay, now it seems to work. Uh, sometimes you have to do it. You know, it's not the best definition of insanity that do the same and expect different outcomes. Maybe it's a different timing. Uh, so, now it's getting downloaded. 83% uh, are already done. This is how it looks after it's downloading, when it's downloaded. Resetting. Okay. Press reset, book. Now, now we should be, now we should be there. Yeah? Okay, like before, yeah? like before, if we open now the serial monitor, yeah? we should see some information, information printed out. Yeah? Let's see if I press. Reset here. Yeah. Mm, quite a lot of information now. Did I have the wrong portrait? This is also possible. Let's have a look at the Setup. You see, it's quite a program, right? <laughs> Check post. Setup. Board rate. Nine thousand six hundred. Of course. Then I cannot see anything. This is clear. If I do have the wrong board rate, I have. The wrong portrait. Thing works gateway version zero. Now I can read it. Huh? Look at that. Huh? Doing it right, already working. Also here, I've explained this last time. I've explained this last time. There are uh, different levels of, of, of warnings and, and errors and so on. And we'll start all this. So if we now uh, write get verbose. You see, it's just error turned on. So I will start warning. I will start info. And I will start debug. So that we get all, get all necessary or all additional information this program supports us. If we can now write get verbose. Okay. We've turned on everything. And again, first I have to enter my, my Wi-Fi. Okay? As is exactly the same command. Yeah? So I have to use uh, set SSID and set pass. So set SSID. Yeah? Type, it, type in the SSID of the network you want to connect with and And type in connecting. Should work, hopefully. Yeah. Tries to connect. Error. Connected. Good. Perfect. So Wi-Fi check. Yeah. And now, what do we need to to connect to? The ThingWorks instance. Yeah? What do we need there? We need, of course, the ThingWorks server. Yeah? And this is again done with that host. Yeah? And this time we enter the, the address of the ThingWorks instance. Yeah? Then we have to set the app key, of course. Yeah? I don't know the app key, so I need to get the app key from my thing here. There's the app key. I will simply copy it. 
Maybe I should also show you here. So there is the app key. Yeah. Go to the ThingWorks instance, open the app key. This is the app key. Open it yeah, and enter it. Yeah. So what, what needs to be entered here is simply add app key or set app key. Set app key. This one. Took. Set app key. Yeah. And then I set the thing, the same thing. Say set thing. Set thing. And also I will just copy it because I'm too lazy to type it. Thing name set. Okay. And now there are again some properties. I have the value property, I have a Boolean property, I have a common property, something like this. So I want to use a value property for with this value, this uh, class temperature. Yeah? This here is still this 23.1, which we used last time. Yeah? So I will type in set value name. And now value number zero, it's getting numbered, and it's called class temp. Value number zero is now called class temp. And I will also set a value threshold. Set val threshold. This means whenever this value is changed above the threshold, book it will be it will be sent. Yeah. I will set it to 0 0.25 quarter quarter degree Celsius. Okay. Now that's it. I have configured the thing, I've con I have configured the app key, I've configured the host name, I've configured all those things. Yeah. What I want to do now is set the value, and therefore I just have to write set val. Yeah. I want to set the value zero, so the glass temperature, I will set it to 25.3 degree. Let's see what is happening. Ooh. A lot of information. Ooh, response 200. This is nice. You see, sending HTTP request, put, poo, 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 everything is there. And there is again. And if we have, do we have it here? 25.3. <laughs> Okay, so this thing now is sending information, my Arduino, or at least not the Arduino, right now it's not the Arduino, right now it's the ESP, is sending information to the Thingverse instance we just, or made last time. Yeah? This is working. I can now put data from my control system, from my Arduino, to the Thingverse platform. If this is not nice, then I don't know. Okay. Also here, you see, it is always repeating. Yeah, that's again the same thing as last time. Yeah, with this, uh, with this timings and so on. Yeah. I will also put a list of commands. This thing is recognizing down in the link below the video. Okay. At MQTT we did it like this. Yeah? There was this MQTT gateway running and we needed a library on the, on the uh, Arduino. Okay. Now we do it exactly the same. Yeah? Here now this program is running yeah? and instead of typing in commands we will use a library on our Arduino. Okay, we will use the library and this will then shovel the according data automatically to the ESP and the ESP will put it to our ThingWorks. This will be then in next video. Okay. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.